In this video, you'll learn how to use 2FA1 self-service password reset. In a previous video, I enrolled an RFID card. I'm gonna go ahead and present my card to the reader and enter my PIN. Then I'm gonna open up the 2FA1 client. I have UAC enabled, I'm gonna go ahead and click yes. And I'm going to click on challenge response. This is also known as knowledge-based authentication or Q&A. With the 2FA1 system, I can use this to reset my password or to log on to the operating system or to unblock or change a PIN. It, the Q&A or self-service password reset process itself should not be used for what's known as risk-based authentication. And I'll get into that when we go to log on with uh, self-service password reset. In this case, I've entered in my Windows or Active Directory password and confirm that. Next, I'm going to be required to choose from a pool of questions. There's three different categories here. And in this case, by default, I'm required to select five questions. So I'm going to select five questions and click Next. And then I'm going to have to answer these questions. Now down here, you can choose to display the characters or not. I'm going to deselect it and go ahead and answer my questions here. Now, there's different policies that you can apply here. By default, each answer must be at least three characters in length. They do not need to be unique. You can go into policy and set policy that requires that each answer be unique and be of a certain length. Go ahead and click Finish and click Save, and I'll be required to log off. Now let's say through 2FA1, you're always logging on with your RFID card. And one day you need to log on with your password. And you go to type in your password and you just can't remember it. One of the things that you can do with 2FA1 is you can go and log on with emergency access. Emergency access is also ideal for in the event that you've been logging on with your proximity card and for some reason your proximity card is no longer available or if you're logging on with fingerprint and for some reason you go to a system that doesn't have a fingerprint reader. So you click on the emergency access tile. You'll put in your username. If this was a domain joint system, you could put in your domain or go ahead and click next and you'll be presented with three of the five questions that you answered during your enrollment. Now in this case, if I didn't know the answers to these questions, I could go ahead and click the arrow and it'd be a failed attempt. By default, you get three failed attempts before you're locked out. Now, the answers that I provided, they are unique, but we don't track the capitalization or spacing. So I could decide to uh, capitalize or have lowercase answers here. And once I answer the questions, I'll be, prevent, I'll be presented with the emergency access options. Now, this, these options can be configured during enrollment, or they can be configured by 2FA1 server or within the local client. Now, in this case, I want to reset my password. I could just click log on, or if for some reason I had blocked my PIN, this would say block PIN, or if somebody had watched me enter my PIN and I wanted to change my PIN, I could change it here. But in this case, I want to reset my password. So I'm going to go in and enter my new password. 2FA1 doesn't ex expect you to know your prior password because you've already proven something else. Those three questions that you answered are proving to the system some knowledge other than your password. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And it's going to inform me that my password was successfully changed. So, in this case, I can now go and log on with my password and gain access to the operating system.